What is the greatest of the end time signs? We are in agreement that the Lord's coming soon. Amen. And so what is the sign that you think, Dave, is the greatest sign or the convergence of signs that we're witnessing right now that he is coming? Well, if I had to select an individual sign, I would say it has to do with the signs that relate to the nation of Israel because all of end time Bible prophecy focuses upon the nation of Israel. I always say Israel is God's prophetic time clock because in the Bible it'll say this is going to happen in the end times when that happens to the Jews and this is going to happen when that happens to the Jews. Even Jesus, for, uh, when in his Olivet Discourse mentioned, he said, you know, um, watch Jerusalem. And he said, Jerusalem's going to be under the Gentiles for a long time, but when Jerusalem is no longer under the Gentiles, I'm coming back. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, and that in our lifetime, or at least in my That's lifetime, right. uh, 1967, when the Jewish people yep. in the nation of Israel right. reclaimed the old city, and they are there to stay. Yes, and that uh, interesting thing about that is that uh, uh, most churches are sound asleep about all oh. this, and uh, sh instead of getting their people ready for the Lord's return or teaching or preaching pop psychology, you know, uh, number one question we get seems that our ministry is, I live in so-and-so place. Do you know a Bible-believing church? Because there's so few and far between these days. But the interesting thing is that in Israel, the Orthodox Jews are expecting the Messiah any moment because they know that their scriptures say He's coming when they're back in the land and back in the city. So they're expecting Him. And they're going to be surprised not by His coming, but by who His identity is what's going to surprise yes. them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Well, we were talking just earlier uh, with Mondo Gonzalez, who said even of late, the Sanhedrin, which oh, has yeah. been brought back into existence, they have actually begun dialoguing with evangelical Christians to say, now what is it that you believe? And they're grappling with some of these things. Yeah. So I think we really are on the cusp of a breakthrough, even within the Jewish uh, culture well, and, and, and As you well know, the Orthodox Jews in Israel are doing everything they can to prepare for the Messiah. They're, they're getting everything together for the temple. They're training the priests and, yes. and so forth. I mean, they, they really believe the Messiah is coming soon. Earlier this year, you gave a fantastic presentation. We'll put the link below to one of our conferences where you presented what the Messianic or yes. excuse me, the Orthodox All rabbis the things they're doing. are doing. What are some of those? Well, uh, the, the formation of the Sanhedrin, yeah. which uh, they had tried several times before, it didn't click, but boy, they've got it going now. And uh, the uh, Temple Institute in Jerusalem, which is making all the clothes for the priests, they've made the high priest's uh, clothes, his, his uh, shield in the front with the various ornaments on it, his crown, they have built uh, the table of showbread, uh, they've uh, got the, uh, uh, the candlestick, which cost Oh, the menorah. About a million dollars, a huge candlestick made out of gold. What do you think will be the, the prophetic event that will allow the Jewish people back on the Temple Mount? Well, it's only speculation uh, that I can give you because I don't know, but I've been writing a book on the nine wars of the end times, and one of the things when I started writing about Gog and Magog, one of the things that jumped off the page at me is it says that when the Russians and all of their allies come against Israel and land on the mountains of Israel, that God will destroy them in certain ways. And it says the main thing he's going to use is a gigantic earthquake that he says, it says point blank, will level every wall in Israel. And I think that earthquake is just going to collapse the Dome of the Rock. And then the Antichrist will come in, make his agreement with the Jews, and bang, they'll start building their temple. And bang. So here's a question for those people watching who might be here in the United States. We have a lot of parallels with ancient Israel and, and America today. But some think that our country is progressing. They're progressives. And instead, I would say, well, we're progressing down the wrong path. Boy, you we got need that to right. back up and go uh, back where we, we ought to be. But instead of evolving to a higher state of consciousness or anything else, we are devolving. Our, I like it word. Yeah, the devil's in our devolution. <laughs> so we are devolving. And we are. And we certainly are. Listening to the language being uttered by our various national leaders, even as they embraced what I call the disrespect yes. for marriage act, they said love is love and anyone's love cannot be challenged or judged. We just have to embrace it. So that is the next thing. I well, I, I keep thinking about what happened about a year ago when a, a congressman from Florida stood up on the floor of Congress in, in the House of Representatives and he said that he was opposed to a bill they were trying to pass through about transgenderism. And he said, that's a, that's, that's a violation of God's word. And immediately the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, what's his name, a congressman from New York. Oh, Jerry Nadler. Jerry Nadler stood up and said, this Congress is not interested in what any God has to say. 
Mm-hmm. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the fundamental thing. America has forgotten God. It says on the dais above the yeah, speaker's right. uh, podium, in God we trust. Yes. And so he, he seems to have forgotten that. was that. a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago, as a matter but of fact. But it's, it's, it's happened so fast because yeah. in the 1950s, the Congress passed a law accepting the the in, introduction of under God in the Pledge of Allegiance, mm-hmm. and they also uh, selected one nation under God as the formal motto of the United right. States, all that in activity. So you try to get that through the Congress oh, today, they no would way. laugh at you. Yeah. No way. So how does a Christian in this era, in this moment of, of descending darkness, how does a Christian not only recognize apostasy for what it is, but also stand for righteousness? Well, it's very important. A uh, Christian, first of all, needs to be in the Word. They need to be in prayer every day. And um, most Christians uh, just don't get in the Word much, and they don't know the Word. It's, it's one of the reasons that same-sex marriage has been accepted by many churches almost nice. overnight, particularly among young people, because they don't know the Word. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, uh, and we need to stand for righteousness. We, uh, Jesus said we are to be salt, and we are to be light. And if we aren't salt and light, nobody will be. So we need to, I, I tell people, pray for God to put an issue on your heart. I mean, you can't go out and fight against everything. It's too much. But have it put an issue on your heart. It might be abortion. It might be homosexuality. It might be something else. It might be the national debt or whatever. Put it, and then focus your activities on that. For example, if it's abortion, then God may call you to do different things. He may call you to write the newspaper. He may call you to fight for a congressman who's against abortion and is running for office. Or to volunteer at your uh, local crisis pregnancy center. At a center. crisis pregnancy center, or to get on the cutting edge and go out there and, and demonstrate against a, an abortion, uh, abortion where they're killing babies. Yeah. Uh, but ask God to show you what to do, and He will show you, and then go do it. Mm. Amen.